Houston, you are go for orbit. Go for orbit. Those are kind words, Robert. We're go for orbit here. On the dark night of December 7th, 1972, over 500,000 people gathered near Merritt Island, Florida to watch the launch of the Saturn V rocket. Apollo 17, the final manned mission to the so-called moon, was strangely the only Apollo mission to be significantly delayed, as well as their only nighttime rocket launch. The launch went ahead smoothly, however, in attendance on this debatably historic night was one very special man, Charlie Smith of Central Florida, at the then recognized age of 130, had been formally invited to view the rocket launch as the oldest living American, and perhaps the oldest living human. But after the launch, Charlie was asked to comment. What followed is perhaps the most savage thing I have ever seen broadcast to national television. Communications with the spacecraft have been perfect. Here is Bruce Hall. He's with Charles Smith. He's a 130-year-old former slave who came to this country 118 years ago. He's here for the launch of Apollo 17. Bruce Hall, come in. We have here among the VIPs one very unusual man. He's at least 130 years old. His name is Charles Smith. And do you believe it really happened? You said they would never go to the moon. No, they ain't going there. I'll tell them that. And then they voted them leave it. No, ain't nobody going to the moon. No. What are you going to stop up there? What are going to hold that plane up in there? What are they going to hold it up there? The moon ain't going to hold it. Are oh, they been before? Money, oh, of course, I don't bring to get it. Just like when. They brought back rocks last time when they made a trip to the moon. Do you believe that? <laughs> no, ain't nobody been there. You don't believe they've been to the moon? No, no. Ain't nobody been to no moon. Well, Walter, that's the view of a 130-year-old man. Now back to you. Well, Bruce, uh, Charlie Smith is not the only fellow who doesn't believe that man has gone to the moon. It's not as ridiculous a thought as you, as you might think, or any of us might think. It seems a little bit odd now, but uh, I've talked to a lot of people around the world, and uh, some rather intelligent ones, who uh, somehow or other uh, just cannot accept the fact and, and believe that uh, that uh, man really hasn't done it, that somehow or other it's a big hoax. I've uh, found them many places. I don't know, maybe you have as well, Wally. And uh, it, it really isn't uh, It really isn't anything uh, that unusual. Right, right at this moment, uh, we're about to get uh, the word. Up until this night, Charlie Smith was the oldest person in the United States a folk hero, and a mascot to the state of Florida. He had even been receiving social security checks reflecting his then accepted birth year. But after this night, Charlie Smith would be endlessly ridiculed, stripped of his titles, and largely forgotten. I wonder why. In the following video, we will be discussing the life of Charlie Smith, hearing from the man himself, and for those who make it to the end of the video, a surprise that even I was not expecting. Now enjoy. Welcome to Florida, baby. Introducing Dr. Narco Longo. Let us begin by reading the document from which I first heard about Charlie Smith. 
Long Life in Florida by Hilton Hotema. Chapter number nine. He's 119 years old. The Sunday Tampa Tribune of September 24, 1961, said in a large headline, He's 119 years old. And that made us catch our breath. And there was his picture, in fact, several of them, with the little shack where he lived, in sunny Florida where people pick golden oranges in their short sleeves when New York and Chicago are snowbound. Spencer's law of physical immortality appears not to fail when followed. In a hospitable environment, we must search to find the folks that live long. We went back to our file and found another clipping of him. It had appeared in the same paper, September 23, 1956, just five years before. And here was his picture again, at work picking golden oranges in a Florida grove and receiving his social security card from a government agent. This account went into considerable detail about the man. He was 115 years old in 1956, and his birth date had been fixed more than 30 years before, when he was 85. The account said, A copy of this age establishment is on file in the city hall. At the time of the establishment, there was no reason, such as resulting publicity, for his age to be exaggerated, as 85-year-old people are not that rare. Quote, not that Charlie looks anything like his age, he is still active and works a 72-hour week during the citrus picking season. He is an orange picker and is in the grove from dawn to dusk in the picking season, clambering up and down ladders, often with 50 pounds or more of oranges in his picking sack hung around his neck. It was in an orange grove that Charlie first came to the attention of the U.S. government. The foreman of the picking crew asked him for his social security card. He said that he had none. When they began to check into his record in order to secure a card, the officials found that he was 103 years old. He is officially listed as the oldest person in the United States receiving social security checks. This man was born in Africa, July 4, 1842, according to the records. One morning in 1854, when he was 12 years old, he heard that a boat was at the dock, not far away, and asked his mother if he could go and see the boat. She said yes, he went, and he never saw his mother again. When the boy reached the dock, he saw a gaily decorated ship, and a group of his people being entertained by some men who were telling them about a great land across the sea, where fritter trees grew everywhere, and all one had to do was pull the pancakes off. Another tree nearby had syrup leaves. The Africans were fascinated and eagerly accepted the invitation to come aboard and see the ship. The crowd milled around the vessel as different pretties were pointed out to them, and then they were led below decks for a look. When they came up on deck a short time later, they were shocked to see the ship was far from shore. The slave traders had another load to sell, and the slave markets in America would welcome the human cargo. The ship arrived at a certain American port in the south, where the cargo of human beings was sold, and this lad was bought by a southern rancher. The new owner named the lad after himself, and the lad became a personal servant of the two children of the rancher. He lived in the house with the family, and never lived with the other slaves. The lad was 21 when Lincoln granted freedom to the slaves, but for him that meant a little change. Before his owner died, the lad promised him that he would stay with the family until they died or married. This he did, and he did not leave that home until the latter part of the 19th century. Just before the Spanish-American War, our hero went to Florida and began picking oranges for a living. After the government made his exceptional age public, he began getting offers for appearances. Of him, the Tampa Tribune of September 23, 1956 said, quote, He is something of a tippler and likes nightlife. When he was being interviewed last summer, he had to move out a case or so of empty beer, whiskey, and wine bottles to make room for the interviewer. He cut the session short as he had a date to go out in town with some men 90 years his junior. 
The actual facts indicate that gluttony damages the body more than drinking or smoking, both of which the doctors condemn and advise people to eat lots of nourishing food for health and vigor. These doctors have much yet to learn. It is a matter of record that Drakenberg, a Dane who lived 146 years, was more often drunk than sober. At the age of 111, he married a woman of 60. Do not misunderstand us. Drinking damages the body, and we oppose it. We are only reciting facts in the comparison of evil habits, one of which is eating, as we have shown in chapter number 15. It is said that our hero lives alone and does his own cooking when he cooks. He shaves daily, bathes each day, climbs up and down steps, walks more than a mile to town every few days, and does all things an active man of sixty does. He said he, quote, was married once and had only one child, end quote, a son who lives near him. Pause here. A quick side note, both Charlie and his son were noted for their bright blue eyes, despite having extremely dark skin. And I resume. As to diet, our hero just eats what comes handy. He mentioned, quote, bread and sausage, end quote. He says he never eats any fat and eats a cooked meal about once a month. He smokes cigarettes while working, and more when he is not working. He heard of a man in South America who is reputed to be 167. He says he will equal that age, if not surpass it. He got off to a good start in life by having sturdy parents. In tropical Africa, with all the natural resources that promote health and prolong life, his habit of drinking and smoking are damaging to the body, yet present the paradox of helping the body by lessening the desire for food, a condition regarded by doctors as dangerous, causing them to urge people to whip up a failing appetite with something. This man is 119 years old, never was sick, never took any medicine, never was vaccinated, nor inoculated, knows nothing about health rules, never heard of balanced diet, food combinations, mineral salts, vitamins, calories. He smokes and drinks and yet has the vitality of a man of 60. According to the theories of the health experts, he should have died before reaching 50. There stands out in his life one big factor that is never noticed by these health experts. Climate. His life experience proves that a favorable climate means more to the welfare of the body than all the health rules taught by the experts. Whereas, they claim that climate means little if their teachings are observed. Now we have the evidence to prove they are wrong. We have said more in another place about eating, drinking, and smoking, showing that it is possible for drinkers and smokers to live long because it lessens the appetite for food, a fact which indicates that food is not the great factor in man's life that people and doctors think it is. There is little in the story of this old man to benefit anyone searching for ways and means to live healthy and long. These old people know nothing about the basic factors that promote health and prolong life. They just happen to follow a good course of living without knowing it. Who knows much about the laws of creation that promote health and prolong life? Not the writers of books on these subjects. Most of them die rather early, and so, what they write is of little value. He who is competent to write on the subject is he who knows something about the laws of creation that rule these conditions. What are these ruling conditions? They are 1. Climate 2. Environment and 3. Habits And there is not a school in this country that teaches anything relative to these things. How would a teacher feel to appear before a body of people in the land of ice and snow at the time when a blizzard was killing hundreds and shout from the lectern that they live where they are not made to live? What kind of response would he get? He would be lucky if he were not arrested and thrown into prison. Where is the man of means who would supply funds to found a school to teach the great way of life? And where could a competent teacher be found? This is a private, individual matter, and for the first time in any historical period when, 
It is said there is freedom of speech. It is comparatively safe for the publication of this guiding knowledge relating to the law of creation. End quote. We will now hear from Charlie Smith himself in a 1975 interview. The following is an interview between Elmer Sparks, Texas ranchman and historian, with Charlie Smith, old-time slave of Bartow, Florida. Okay. Is it turning? Yes. Uh, Miss Smith, what is your full name? Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith. Charlie. Name, raise me name is Charlie Smith. My first name, first name with my mother name is, is Mitchell. Yeah. Mitchell Wadkin. That's what my mother and father named me, Mitchell Wadkin. I was raised in that, you were born in Africa and come from the United States. The state that is in slavery time, the solely colored people. Yes. Solely colored people. And the green them from Africa. And they brought me from Africa. I was a child. A boy. The colored <coughs> folks wanted to throw me off. The boat coming from Africa. Throw him overboard. I didn't cuss. So I moved, but let the damn wheel swallow him like it done Jonah. Hadn't it been that the colored one wanted to throw me off. Hadn't it been for Legree and the captain of the boat, Legree was a white man, and the captain of the boat was a white man. But the colored one wanted to throw me off the boat. And they were Jay. And they bring me from Africa. Liberia, Africa. We are support them and put in the United States but the, the northern people bought colored folks put you up on a block and sell you big you off the highest will be to get you the highest will be to get you the northern people bought colored folks and the south bought colored folks and the northern people didn't care either people to the north say it's too cold boom you know to stand the cool but you got southern white folks you got southern white folks to look at them and pay the colored white folks southern white folks to look at them and they got to mistreating them so and it come down the north and the south first Fought a war to free the color. North and South fought a war. And that was a slave attack. And freedom and general. Yeah. I ain't reading for it because I couldn't read. I knew when it was done. And the man to put you up on a block to sell you, to bid you all. And when they come down here and freedom, they bought the, the North bought the whole state of Louisiana and get into the colored people for their territory to make the law and rules to sell. And the colored people sold their rights, sold out to the white, silver and white. And that was freedom. No uh, freedom. The North and South fought a war. The first of all, was in the United States. The North and South fought a war to free the colored people from slavery time. I ain't reading for it because I couldn't read. I know it because I was in the crew. The color. The colored people and all this did hate me from a child, bringing me from Africa. The colored one to throw me off the boat. Throw him overboard. Cuss. Throw him overboard. Let me cuss. Let me uh, how, how did you come to me on the block? Get out and brought over here. Was you brought over by well, surprise? Yeah, you know, they, they brought me over here. They, 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 no, they, they people, solely colored people. Then they tricked you to get you on the boat? They what? They fooled you on the boat. They fooled the colored people on the boat. I asked my mama, could I go down to the boat landing <laughs> to see that white man? I was raised in, in uh, Africa. 
That was in Africa. Yeah. That was I was raised born day in Africa. Yeah. With white folks didn't know why people stay in Africa, South part of Africa. Yeah. They stayed in the north part of Africa. And they were the sole the colored people in the south part of Africa. They put you up on a block and bid you off. And the way they got us on the boat, he said, come right in here. That was the city. Come in here. Color in you, all the color. Over in that country, you don't have to wait. If you get hungry, all you got to do is go to the flitter tree. Had the flitter tree on the boat. Clean, at the flitter tree. You go to the flitter tree. The same thing now we have people call it in the United States. They call them pancakes, they call them flitter. Mm-hmm. Them flitter t- trees, bad that. That tree bad the flitter to clean. You had a flitter tree. Get you on the boat. He got on. Chad shows a flitter tree on the boat. Come on down here. Call the Lord Dick on the call the flitter tree. Then he shows the syrup tree. He had a syrup tree. Oh, he was on the boat too. Come on down here. And the call on the Lord Dick on the boat. They keep called the hatch hole. Come on down here in the hatch hole. Show something down there. Got out in the hatch hole, we should have felt the boat moving, but we thought it was going back up there to the flitter tree. And it was leaving. And when it landed, it landed in New Orleans. There was the colored people who sold it. So, they bring me from Africa over here. The colored folks want to throw me off. Throw them overboard. Throw them overboard. And the white wouldn't get me yet. So don't you throw that boy. Throw him over, but we got down, let the damn wheels swallow him like a dumb zone. If that's what they said. Don't throw me off the boat. Bring me from Africa in the United States. Got it over here to slave you. You put you on the block to slave you. Put you on the stage, over well, the court is a block. Put you up on the stage. This a matter of body. The highest ability gets you. you get never, on you. I've heard of it. The highest bill will get you. He will tend to his plantation. Put another one up there. The highest bill who can ever beat you. He was the he came to his plantation. He had the white in the south. And he went to mistreating him, the color. Getting children by the colored women. And all said you that. Getting colored. And the white find it out how to treat him. To, 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 to. And they come down here the first wall over in the United States, it's just north and south, spot of wall, the three to kill them. And who was it that bought you? Do you remember who bought you? Bought me? Yeah. Oh, I was uh, the, when I went to New Orleans, that way they sold the people. The man raised me, he didn't buy me. The man raised me, he was going to kind of put you up on the block to sell you. He was Jake. The man was Jake. He named me, that's the name I'm going now, Charlotte Smith. He named me, he needed us when he took me. He raised me in Texas, Galveston, Texas, where I was raised in. And the man that raised me named Charlotte Smith, and that's the name he gave me. Mm-hmm. He gave me Charlotte Smith, and he always teach me. And his children, he treated me just like he treated his children, and everything, not one thing, everything. We had to give her, we slept to give her. Oh, the boys now, we just sleeping in the little women now. All the we boys, we slept to give her. I'm the, maybe he's a cattle man, Charlie Smith, mm-hmm. he raised me. He had all kind of cattle, and all of us told his pistols and something to shoot. And I was on this colored cowboy. I got on a cowboy shirt now. I was born from Texas. Been had it all my days. I was raised up a cowboy. I was the only cowboy, colored cowboy he had. He was in Texas. His name was Charlie Smith. And he always teach me and his children. Anything you got to have, don't never let it give out. And saying, enjoy your money when you're living. You can't get none of the religion when you're dead. He said, millionaires die and leave all they got. 
Maybe saying they got to answer and don't know what I'm saying. And that's his name of Charles Smith, and he named me Charles Smith. And he always told me, don't change my name. And when he died, all of them, he had two years, three or four of them. Hey, this little, he didn't put no money in no bank. He had these little money seeds. People tell me people got them now in some places, you know, in the house, you know. He had two, two in his drug store, in the dry goods store, and two in the grocery store. That made four. And that way he kept his money and all his cowboy money. What we didn't do. We, all cowboys, wore boots. Half a leg boots and knee, what you call knee boots, that come clean to your knees. Well, we told it out of what he didn't keep for us, we carried it out of boots. And I was the only colored cowboy he had. All the rest of them was white. We tore his pistols and rifles. We carried them, we carried them. He killed bells and panels and things like that. When he left the stuff, he was a cattle man. He had plenty of cattle. And all the <coughs> animals, bells, panels and things like that, and limes. Did eat up the little pigs and the young stuff. And that's what these the cowboys were carrying the pistols and rifles to kill them. Now, what did you do after the slaves were freed? After you was with him? With him? You, you just went ahead and work on him. Well, when they we we freed the killer, we just say, the man would, <coughs> when they freed the killer, they bought the whole state of Louisiana and give the color to their territory to make their laws and rules. And the color people sold the rights. All they have to when they get up in the world and property anything, they have to get it in two butter white. Now, that's the way they done. They ain't got no can't make no laws, can't make no rules. If they make them white let them have it, they sold out. Well, now, after he died, then uh, where did you go then? After who died? After this Charlie Smith. He ain't dead. Well, I mean, the one Oh, that... he did, all right, but where I went, I went, he did sold the colored folks. After, free, after he sold the colored people, after in slavery time, he sold the colored folks. Or did you go And, and in the first war, it was in the, in the, the North and the South Spot War. The North bought colored people, and the South bought colored folks, and the, the North got the Southern white folks to look after them and take care of them. They wouldn't tell them, no, say it was too cold for them, and got the Southern white folks to look after them, and the Southern white folks was went to mistreat them. Well, did you, did you go out west then, or no, did you I stay there? The I wasn't in the west then, yeah. I was in the west when they freed them. That's what I mean, after freedom. Yeah, after freedom, I was in the West. I was in the cold old man Charlie when he went to selling them. He, he rejected sell, uh, selling me. Put you up on a block, he rejected. Because he ruled that part of Texas. He was a cattle man. And he ruled that part of Galveston. He ruled that part. And what he, he said, he, he went. Well, and he, he, when he wanted to sell me, Put me on the block to get me heap of Jake. And he didn't do it. And he raised me, carried me to his house. And he raised me. He named me Charlie. His name was Charlie, and he named me Charlie. Well, his after, name was Charlie after Smith. That, I, did I, you go up to Mississippi? Did you have That's the name and he gave me. That's in my name, what my mother and father named him. My name Mitchell. Mitchell Watkins. But he stole me and he got me. And he named me Charlie. That's the name I'm going in. And when he died, he died. And when he died, he always teach me and his children. He didn't teach us one thing, he teach us all. He said, anything you've got to have, don't never let it live out. And he said, enjoy your money when you're living. Because you can't carry none of it with you when you're dead. Enjoy your money when you're living. He teaches that all the time. And I didn't go to school much. But I thought I hadn't been used to shooting no pistols and nothing to shoot with. And I was so full of more my pistols and rifles I had to carry. 
and uh, do anything else. But I was on this colored boy. All the cowboys were white. We were all at the giver. We slept the giver. Now everything. We were no different than the treatment at all. None. No. No man shot. Did, you, did of, you move up to Mississippi? Didn't you go to Mississippi eventually? Oh, I've been all over the all over the you, you worked. You worked in Mississippi, didn't you? I'm a, I'm a state man, mister. I worked for the United States. I'd go get bad people. I'm a state man, and we as long as I live, you're my thought is right here. I'm a state man. I'm the man when the mean big the king, man when got the man killed the president. And the state named me. I got three names. The United States. I work for the United States now. Well, Name me Trigger Kid. Me and Billy the Kid went and got the man killed the president. Went and got him. Had a five hundred dollar reward in the boat to go get him. He killed the president. Get talk, killed Garfield. Garfield was the first president that was killed with the United States. And the man killed him named Get Talk and went back over in his state where he come from. That was Charles Guitar, wasn't it? And when us Put out the five hundred dollar reward and they both go get him. There were six men right at the line of the states. <clears throat> you had to get started from them to go over there. Everybody go over there to get them from five hundred dollars. Them men to kill them. Kill them. Them six right. men. They kill you. If you go over there to get that man, the man then to kill him, he went back in that state because that's the state he was born and raised in. And the six men right at the line of the United States. And you, you, you had to get started from them to go in the foot in that state. And he's gonna, and we, me and Billy the Kid, the son of some over there, the United States named me Trigger Kid, but that's the name I gave him. I've been waiting for the United States, I work for the United States now. If you're bad or if you're all bad people, that's my job now, white or black. If you, if you do the wrong thing and the same the edge already and I don't get you, I won't see you. The son of Satan. The man killed the president. It's running. It's running. Um, you, you picked some fruit, didn't you? You done quite a lot of fruit picking? Oh, I've done all kinds. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah. Here, 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 my picture. Me and this man, that's my my picture, and that's my age, and this is true. That's a white man. Me and him are the two oldest people in the world at that time. I was staying at a town called Almanil, they say right there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was picking fruit, you know Yeah. And they told, they told me, they told me you were picking fruit when you was 113, is that right? Oh, right, don't you see? I see. That's it. That's it. For tell for tell. You know, we, that's the United States. It's printed and sent to me to show people. Yeah. The United States. I'm going to work for the United States now. I'm a state man. I work for the United States. I go get bad people. White or black. Don't care how old, who he is. If I got, if we do the wrong thing, I'm, I'm a United States man, as long as I live. Uh, were you uh, interviewed by Robert Ripley? You remember that Robert Ripley? Robert he, Ripley. Ripley, he's right there, that's living or not. They, well, I remember all, all bad people. I remember uh, white or black. This Ripley's the man you're pictured with there, Charlie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's the United States. I show it to people. Me and this man was the two oldest people in the world and the quietest to me. That's a white man. And the state named me Trigger Kid. Me and Billy the Kid went and got the man killed the president. Get talk killed Garfield. Garfield was the president of the United States. Now he he, he wouldn't would know when I read about it. And then we got to, he killed him. Get talk. Charles killed Get Garfield. Tall. And, and everybody go over there to get him. Put them five hundred dollars. They kill them. There were six men right to the line of the states, and they, everybody go over there to get the man who would kill, kill the president. That's what state he was raised. The man done to kill him. He go back in that state. Do you, That's the state he was born and raised in. Do you remember what state that was, Charlie? Where? The state where the 
where this Garfield went back in, guitar. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember who got it now, but I know he went back in the street. Yeah, yeah. He went back in the street he was, he was born and raised in. And when he got to kill the man, he went back in that street. Well, there's six men that had the line of the ball from on. Six men uh, killed everybody to go over there to get him. After this man went down to kill him. Guitar killed Garfield. Garfield was the first president of the United States. You wrote a book about it, you know. And uh, Guitar killed him and went back in that state where he was born and raised in. And everybody went there over there to get him. Them six men that had the line did, did kill them. And they killed them. And the son, me, and Billy the Kid. The state named me Trigger Kid. And Billy the Kid, that was a white man. Well, this one over there was right up there. And they said, hey, where you going? They were them six men. Called them six men hooking bulls. You had to get started from them to go in the front in that state. Where you going? Going across the desert. All right, you get started from us. We got sold it, so we cussed. So we got sold it. We got sold it from the United States, showed them this. Here it is. And here I was, here I was got it. So here I was got down sold it. That's what they told me, them six men. Well, yeah. Told them six men hooking moves. They read on, all right, go ahead. They said, we damn sure going. Read on all. Got to the camp. We just got Thought us want to search. Y'all, y'all come to the God of the day. Y'all come by the hooking bulls? We cuss. So if you come by some damn bull or another, where you got sorted from the hooking bulls to search, the boss of the camp ain't here. Just keep you to Just working. The boss of the camp ain't here. You say if you want to search, the boss ain't the camp ain't here, and the gods are there. Just right there, so don't because, because well, uh, coming back to the uh, modern day year or later, did the Social Security people, did they come see you? Social Security? Yeah. Yeah. They did. Uh, yeah. You remember how old you were then? Yeah. The man raised me, yeah. The man raised me, the man raised me, name, give me the, the name I got, Charlotte Smith. But I, mean, I was raised in Galveston, Texas. Well, I mean later, later, the, no, were you about 113 when the Social Security people come and well, don't Well, I don't show it to you, Dad, till now That's what I thought it said. I don't show it to you. And you're not Keep on asking him a question, that's the reason I showed it to you. Yeah, I show it to you. My age, Dad, yeah, I'm older now than it was then. I'm older now. I'm 144. Last, last year, 4th of July. 144 years old now. My birthday, I guess a birthday card. I'm 144, last fourth day of July, last year. I'm and, 144. And you, and you, don't, you don't wear glasses, you No, know? I ain't never worn one. And you don't wear hearing aids, is that it? I got hearing, I hear this good and out of over this year. I believe that. I see good as it is. The United States takes care of me. The United States. If I, if they send me the action, or to read out on get you, I don't see you. I'm the man straighten up more sure. There's something is there. Could the people didn't come and stay there. You could go uptown, but they didn't see him walk sure. I'll straighten it up. The state something the day to straighten it. Now could the people on property there. Right train here in the wall shooter. The colored porter couldn't get off the train there. Right. White folks didn't line to get off the truck, cut up coat on the train, couldn't get off there. The state something with it. Straighten it up. I straighten it. Color folks can get off there. Not color, color people on, on property in, in Washington. I had to go to here Oxford. Sign was printed up there right at the depth for them. What the sign say? Read nigger and run. That wasn't one of the signs. The state something with it. So go tear that sign down. So if you need any help, let us know. I went there. The sign was right up there. Right the dip book. So read nigger and run. You see, he asked me, you got sorted? 
А сиди, а как это вот? Женщины столовились. Я могу гадать столовились. И я могу хил. И фолифай. А то и да. И алкс. А то и да. Anywhere the states tell me to go and do, I do this now. All this year, ever since I've been waiting for the new, I've been waiting for the new United States a hundred years when I go over there. Do you bring them to the Mason Lodge? Yeah. I was made a Mason. I've been put, time I got old enough, I was put in, the man raised me, put me in the Mason. I've been a Mason a hundred years. If I want a mason, I couldn't join you and any other man get my age. Any anybody, white or black, you can get too old to join the mason. You can get too young to join. And when I got old enough, the man put me in the mason. One man Charlotte. He put me in the mason. If I want one, I couldn't go. That's that's in a ring, but just the set dropped out of the square and comfort. He yeah. dropped that out. Of, out of, well, that I'm ring. a mason. That was this ring, this that was sitting between that ring, and it dropped out. I was in a mission a hundred years. Old man Charlie put me in the mission. I'm the first colored man over me in a mission in the United States. You know that. When I was, if I won't want that one, not only me, nobody got age. You can get too old to join the mission. And you can get too young. Yeah. If I want now, and now I couldn't be, because I'm too old. And anybody my age, white or black, you can't join the mission at that age. I know it. I've been a mission a hundred years. I know mission. And you're speaking of cowboys. We're we're both cowboys. We're right out of. Oh the, yeah, I'm the only color cowboy man Charlie had. He had plenty of cowboys, but I was the only one he had. He raised me. How many were there in your family originally? Oh, my, my family? Yeah. Oh, do I? Your mother and your children. Oh, my mom, and sister. Mom, I didn't have but uh, one brother and two sisters. Three sisters with the baby sisters. My two older sisters was one of them named. One of them was, both of them married all right. My oldest was my baby sister. She was a little kid. She was the baby with all the children. I had one brother. His name was Simon Waddington. My name, what my mother said, the name Mitchell Waddington. The man you have going the name of Charlie Smith, that's the white man who raised me in Texas. Charlie Smith. And he treated me just like he treated his children. And everything we had together, slipped together. Yeah. And when he died, well, people uh, bragged on preachers. So good and so honest and all like that. When he died, I give him money to a preacher, a preacher pray on preachers. I give him money to a preacher, but I, but I won't talk to myself. All the cowboys told the old boots and what money we did. The old man Charlie didn't keep for us. We kept it ourselves in our boots. And I was the only colored cowboy. And we all read together, we all ate together. Not in one time, all the time. You know, treated just like one of the white. Did you, uh, did you, uh, see, you worked in, in Mississippi at one oh, time, did you? Yeah, I worked in where I went. I, when you killed that picture there, was struck, I was standing right down the road there called Alman there. When that picture struck with the sun, sun to us to Denver, Colorado. I wonder if we haven't about covered this and we'll take some pictures. I don't know. And so, thank you and we will take some pictures here.